If you don't believe me, let's talk to a guy who actually serves with them. You know, Willie, we've got some news on Mitt Romney right now, mm-hmm. and we're going to read it. But before that, this morning early, I got up and I started reading some excerpts from McKay Poppins' extraordinary yeah. book. Listen to some of these oh. things that Mitt Romney rightfully said. I, first, a very large portion of my party really doesn't believe in the Constitution. And then he says of Mike Pence, no one has been more loyal, more willing to smile when he saw absurdities, more willing to ascribe God's will to things that were ungodly than Mike Pence. Let me say it again. Wow. More, few people were more willing to ascribe God's will to things that were ungodly than Mike Pence. Holly and Cruz, he said, were two of the smartest people he ever met in politics. But he said there they were on January the 6th, making a calculation that put politics above the interest of American democracy and the U.S. Constitution. And then this, when Romney took the stage at a Utah Republican meeting in 2021 after the January 6th riots, he quickly realized he'd underestimated the vitriol awaiting him. The heckling and booing got so loud and sustained he could barely get a word out. He labored to push through his prepared remarks. He became fixated on a red-faced woman in the front row who was furiously screaming at him why her child stood quietly by her side. He paused in the speech and couldn't help himself. He looked down at her and he said, aren't you embarrassed? Hmm. Aren't you embarrassed? And neither that woman, nor Mike Pence, nor Josh Hawley, nor Ted Cruz, nor my old Republican Party, or Mitt Romney's old Republican Party. Embarrassed. You know, one thing, I've I've been very, very complimentary of what Mitch McConnell did on January the 6th. What I found out from this reporting is that on January the 2nd, Angus King called Mitt Romney and said, we have a problem. Intel is suggesting that the far right extremists are coming to Washington, D.C. They're bringing weapons. There's going to be violence. Mitt Romney immediately picks up his phone. He texts. He texts Mitch McConnell and says, we're in trouble. We need to plan for this. This is what's going down. Mitch McConnell didn't return his text. Radio silence. When a sitting member of the United States Senate told the Senate Majority Leader, we are going to be facing violence on January the 6th. And so Mitt Romney thought back about that as the senators were being chased all around the Capitol and they were trying to find a safe room. And one of the security guards said, well, the senators know where they're going. And Romney's uh, aide snapped and said, no, they don't. They don't know where they're going. What, there's no plan for this? You have no plan to get these Republican senators and Democratic senators to a safe space? And at that point, Mitt Romney realized that not only had Mitch McConnell ignored his warnings, He'd ignored the warnings of everybody else. And there they were, lost among a mob, desperately trying to find a room where where they could save United States senators' lives. A very large portion of my party, Mitt Romney said, really doesn't believe in the Constitution. 
And it's confirmed when Donald Trump says he wants to terminate the Constitution. And four or six of eight Republicans say, yeah, we're on that guy's side. People ask, why is Mitt Romney retiring from the Senate? I ask, how in the hell did he stay there in that Republican Party for so long, Willie?